Hello everyone. As Dr. Mulkraj Anand, the novelist and Indian writer, also the person after whom this auditorium has been named, he was best known for his social and political works like Cooley and Untouchable. He is famously quoted with certain very famous words. Man, he says, is both the subject and object of his culture. He is both the builder as well as the building. These words could not be better applied to the young successful officers of UPSC Civil Services Examination 2021 sitting before us, as they in their pursuit of cracking the civil services examination through hard work, determination, and thirst of knowledge have come to embody the very culture of excellence. Sleepy Classes IAS since 2017 has tried to contribute in our own little way of strengthening this steel frame of India. This event, a first for us, is just here to pay an ode to the pillars of our Indian administration, both future and past. Before moving ahead with the ceremony, I would first like to introduce our panel of esteemed chief guests, as well as like our co-founder, Manmeet Kaur, as well as senior faculty, Shraddha Ganju to also honor our chief guests with our token of gratitude. First, we have Sri Vinod Zutshi, who in his 35 years of public experience served in many key positions such as Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, Secretary, Minister of Culture, Government of India, Secretary, Tourism, Government of Rajasthan. He has further played a key role in mentoring and guiding a number of aspirants towards their civil services examination dream. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Next, we have Sri T. R. Sarangalji, retired IAS, who in his career served many important posts, including Principal Secretary, to uh, Government of Punjab as, uh, as Principal Secretary Elections, Principal Secretary Welfare of Scheduled Castes and Backward Castes, uh, Principal Secretary Women and Child Development, and many more. We welcome you, sir. We also have among Amongst us, Sri S. S. Dillo, who joined the Indian Administrative Services in 1984 and was a part of the Haryana Kader. He, in his career, has held a number of important posts, such as Chief Administrator Huda, Principal Secretary to the Chief Minister Haryana, as well as Additional Chief Secretary to the Government of Haryana. A very warm welcome to you, sir. We also have amongst us Sri Orlok, who's been a part of the corporate sector at a number of high positions and is currently further uh, uh, giving his contributions in the education sector. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Also amongst us is Sri Iqbal Sidhu, who served the Punjab government in numerous capacities, starting as SDM Gidarba, and also went on to serve as commissioner to, as right to services, uh, in the Right to Services Commission Punjab. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you to everyone for being a part of this very, very special event. Uh, so the agenda for the day shall start with the Deep Prajwalan or the Lamp Lighting Ceremony, followed by a few words of wisdom by our esteemed panelists. Then we will have a small cultural performance. And lastly, to our main event, which is felicitating the young officers present amongst us. Now I humbly request our chief guests to please proceed towards the Lamp Lighting Ceremony.
After this auspicious ceremony, I would please request our panel of chief guests to share a few words of wisdom with our aspirants as well as young officers. Esteemed guests on the dais, the new members of the civil services fraternity, other guests present in this auditorium, media, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank Sleepy Classes and Quantel for having given me this opportunity to be amongst you. In the same breath, I would like to congratulate the young new members who are going to shape the destiny of this country. I had the opportunity of preparing a large number of IS aspirants who had got into the written exam and the main exam during the interview stage. And I'm very happy that today I'm talking to and interacting with the same people who were prepared for these mock interviews and they have made it. Friends, Civil services is, to recall the words of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the steel frame of India. You are a permanent, you know, governance machinery. The political machinery keeps changing, but the bureaucratic machinery remains the same. So, friends, you have a very long journey. And so, you must set your goals correctly, right in the beginning. It's a very exciting journey. And let me tell you, I remember in the mock interviews, a large number of you, when they were asked this question as to why you are pursuing this career, civil services or IAS. And many of them said, without knowing what exactly it is. That's what I think it's going to be a very satisfying job. At the end of the career, it will give me a great satisfaction. Friends, all those people who said this were very right. I can cite my own example. Having risen to the level of the Secretary to Government of India, which one used to dream when one entered the LBSNA on the first day, the way you aspired to be in the IAS and other civil services, you dreamt about it. You should again dream when you join LBSNA or any other institute that you will rise to the highest level, that you will be a good civil servant and you will serve the country. As I said, your journey is very exciting. And in the same context, when somebody asks me, at some point in time, after I superannuated, what do you think about your experience in the IAS? And the reply which I gave was, if I were to born again and in India, I would again opt for the Indian Administrative Service. So friends, you would be undertaking one of the most comprehensive training. The way the government of India spends its resources and money and everything and time on the probationers is huge. It's unprecedented. You won't find it in any other service for two years. You are built, you are molded, you are trained to serve the country for another 40 years. You will have a lot of excitement at LBSNA and other institutions. 
enjoy that period. It's supposed to be the best period. But at the same time, you have to be very serious about your career. And it's not that you have studied and got into these services, and now it is the end of it. I would say it is the beginning of your career. Every day you have to write your ACR. Every day you have to perform well. You can't rest on your laurels all the time. But at the same time, it's a very exciting journey. So have business with pleasure. Let me also tell you, then in academies, you're also given some extra marks. You're subjected to certain tests. So you have to be very careful. There are many probationers, maybe we saw our own colleagues, that they never bothered. And it affects your seniority in the end. I mean, I, because of good marks during the tests in the academy, I could increase my rank by 16 notches. And the advantage that I got was when we were empaneled as the Secretary to Government of India, I was one of the first to get the posting as Secretary. Now, you can't imagine at this point in time, you're so excited about the whole thing. But always at the back of your mind, you must keep a tab on your own self and see that it's a long journey and one small mistake in this entire journey can cost you a lot. Friends, there are many things I would like to speak to you. We have other guests who would like to address you. I will only sum up by saying that you dreamt to be in the services. I also dreamt after having got into it, you must make the most of it. And be self-motivated. Make achievements and be happy about it. There may not be too many people for you to motivate it. Not too many people may, tap your, may pat your back. So you have to be driven by your self-motivation. There are many challenges. I won't like to go into the details. But there are many myths also, political interventions, you know, dealing with people, dealing with media. But I tell you something, this is part of your job. You have entered a service which is related to a public service. And when you are dealing with public service, you have to deal with people. So you have to develop the knack for being a good public servant. And let me tell you, whenever you are in dilemma, whether I should do this or I should do that. Always peep, keep the people in focus because it is for them that you're, you're taking decisions. Your integrity, your honesty, your good communication, your ability to meet people, all these things are going to help you and your being humane, strong in human relations a good leader, and a good leader has two qualities. He is a high taskmaster, and he is also high relation oriented. So be that, and you would enjoy. So with these words, friends, I would like to congratulate you once again. If there are questions from your side, I will be very happy to answer them. But at the moment, I close here. Thank you very much, wish you all the best during your career. But I am sure they will be providing key insights to our officers in their future career in the public services. Now I would request Mr. T. R. Sarangal to please share some of his experiences with our officers as well as aspirants. Good morning. Congratulations to Sliti classes and congratulations to the newly selected civil servants, most of them who got coaching from the Sleepy classes and they are today present here in this hall. My friends and colleagues sitting on the dais, 
it's really a great opportunity and privilege to be here and share a few things with you. Mr. Joshi, a very senior officer from uh, Rajasthan Kader, has already given you uh, the kind of uh, uh, the feedback about the service and uh, a little bit tips, the challenges and uh, the way how to conduct the service. And one thing he has said, if I, if it, it is there, a, a, Rebirth or practice of rebirth, which probably uh, is again controversial. He would like to be again a civil servant and that too in India, not in any other country. I remember uh, when we were there in Siva, uh, the Syracuse University, once uh, the, our director, we were talking something. He said, your civil ser service IES is so powerful, wish I had been there an IS officer in India. I was so surprised to uh, really uh, know this from the, this feedback from that lady because even they were feeling that the bureaucrats in India are too powerful, but it has both sides. In which sense they were taking, I really don't know because Powerful and absolute power, that is again a, a kind of uh, uh, reflection as well. Colonial India had a very long history of civil services. Initially, before 1857, they were selecting few people, not from India. They were selecting from England only. And uh, there used to be one college of civil services where they used to uh, teach them for a couple of years. That was not only for India because they had other, other colonies. So they used to teach them for a couple of years, prepare them for the civil service. And uh, the selection process uh, was not uh, like this, which we have today, UPSC and other rigorous kind of exams and then you get, they had their own system of inducting people, preparing them for different countries and sending them to the countries and the civil size of civil service was not very big. They will select, say, for four, five, six people for uh, India for one year. And the rest of the people, civil servants, who were performing the duties of civil servants, they were, they were taking sons and, sons and daughters of big Jimmy Das and others. Later on, this system, that college was closed and a different system of uh, recruitment through a competition was started. But uh, that competition was a very limited kind of competition where everybody was not eligible to sit. Only the uh, very, very selected uh, uh, people from very, very sons and daughters, not daughters, very sons, at that time the women were not being inducted. And the conditions were so rigorous that this chance was available to be civil servant in India to very, very selected families. If you have a particular property, land, education, and then a degree from the UK, only then you can sit. And even if you are selected, the final choice was of the rulers to really induct you into the service node. There are, there are cases where the people were finally selected, but they were not given appointment. So that was the kind of the shape of the civil service. And uh, surprisingly, first 50 years of the civil service, the civil servant from India, which used to be four or five people, not more than that, they were inducted from only one state, Bengal. And uh, only two or three castes, you will be surprised, Okay, this uh, facility, this opportunity was available to almost one state. It was not okay, that others was not eligible, but by chance, I don't know how it would be. If you put restriction, so the restriction was such that only people from one state got uh, selected. And people from only two castes were selected for first 50 years. 
then naturally as the things went the other people other communities other religion people because they, india is not a one the india is, is a continent where people of different language culture religion used to reside and even today residing so then we know the government of india act 1909 where the, the really the, some kind of uh, affirmative action and uh, the communal award and uh, the people from the on communal basis they used to get the kind of reservation and then the this spread of reservation was increased and as 1919 act and then of course 1935 act 1935 act is actually our the the constitution most of the things have been taken from 1935 so this is the background of the indian civil service and then uh, inducting people locally other than ics and ip the local people getting some chance in judiciary and the civil service and uh, i tell you more or less this process was very arbitrary people were not really selected on the basis of competition there were many many other consideration on the basis of which the people from lead families were entering into the civil service that has to be there because whatever was suiting to the british they were selecting the people but after the our when the our constitution was implemented now you people everybody without any caste creed religion you got opportunity you got one examination which is conducted by the union public service commission of course affirmative action is there and it has to be there because you have to take take people from uh, different uh, sections of the society because we are a very big country very big the society and people from different walks of life at few places we have forests we have tribal people we have marginal people we have poor people and all that so constitution provide equal opportunity to everybody write one examination one pre one main and one interview and then final selection and all that but the composition of the civil service as i have already said has to be a kind where people from all walks of life feel that this is our country and we have a chance to enter into the civil service and serve our people okay because we have different segments of the society so many things have happened the pattern of examination changed at one point of time they use they there was a big focus on uh, interview there was big focus on uh, english uh, language both written and spoken then after 79 1979 the whole thing changed there was the preliminary examination was introduced and then uh, the optional subject other subjects prelim and other things for many years has continued then they went on experimenting introduced the essay then introduced many other things and latest the process to which you are going is probably much more rigorous much more rigorous than what we faced in early 80s now preliminary examination is so challenging the number of candidates is so big and examination the pre i'm talking about the pre is so difficult and it really uh, the selecting people who uh, apply their mind who think with their own mind who make decision about the right or wrong answer on the spot this is what happening and the people like us who wrote in the 80s when i read the the question paper preliminary today in fact i'm totally blank frankly the the questions are very complex questions and uh, uh really very difficult i'm happy you people have gone through that process you uh, those who those of you who, who have been selected have really worked very hard to take on the spot decision about the right and wrong answer of course the the cut off is also very low now even if it is low it is very challenging and uh, main examination of course is a kind of descriptive writing 
if you have a good skill writing skill if you have a command on your language you can really do it that that is more the a uh, level playing field you can do that okay but that chance you will get only if you clear the preliminary examination interview of course is again a very personalized thing sometimes the board like your face sometimes they don't like sometimes you they give 100 marks sometimes they give you 150 marks that is totally arbitrary i tell you and the whole process of upsc overall is still arbitrary basically even today it is nothing but a dignified academic examination where the people from the good university from the stephen from the iit those who have a good education background they get selected okay still there is not equal opportunity for everybody the the, the people who have studied from the forests of andhra pradesh tamil nadu or maybe the our border areas from punch and jammu maybe from pikhi wind and all that they don't have that equal opportunity which the people sitting here in chandigarh or the people sitting in delhi people from the stephen people from the iits they are getting still this is a big drawback in the civil service because all india all indian people are not getting opportunities equal opportunity to get into the service but that's the that's all about the selection okay as far as the challenges in the service are concerned now it has become very very challenging you people have come in the civil service and punjab was the last state to come under the british and punjab had a very very big very good bureaucracy because by the time the britishers came here they had they had got lot of experience with the bureaucracy they had got lot of experience with the revenue laws so punjab have best revenue laws best bureaucracy in fact even during those time they used to give a uh, example of punjab bureaucracy to the central provinces the east provinces to see what is happening in punjab and uh, the uh, because the most of the army was from punjab from this area not only really punjab there is the whole western india and uh, punjab so therefore british was very particular about the administration of punjab punjab ics officer probably the white officers they have recorded their uh, experiences many of them have written books of course those books are not available now these books are not published even initially those books were published not in india those were published in london and those books were primarily for the the people living there their relatives their friends ke what they are exactly doing in india but most of these books are now available on the net you can sometime go to the net read couple of books ke what these those ics officers were doing and basically the service is same even today we are doing the same thing i read a, a book of a bureaucrat ics officer who served from 1872 to 94 and there he has described the role of deputy commissioner ke what the deputy deputy commissioner is supposed to do i was surprised ke what deputy commissioner was supposed to do 150 years back even today basically we are doing the same things of course little bit more because now it's a democratic system it is a developmental state and we have couple of other functions but the basic functions which we used to perform 150 years ago we are performing the, the same function even today and you must learn from the experiences of those people people say those people were britishers they had no interest in india they wanted to generate more and more revenue they developed land because they want more revenue they laid railway because they needed more revenue it is partly true but i tell you the job which they did the development they did probably even in free india with all kind of sources available before us with all kind of communication facilities available we are unable to do for the example at the time at in 1857 punjab had no railway line 
वन रेलवे लाइन फ्रॉम मुल्तान टू लाहौर एंड मुल्तान लाहौर टू अटारी वॉज बींग लेड इट वॉज अंडर प्रोसेस इट वॉज नॉट लेड नो ट्रेन वॉज रनिंग इन पंजाब बट बाई एटीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी द ट्रेन वॉज रनिंग रनिंग फ्रॉम कैलकाटा टू पेशावर ट्रेन वॉज रनिंग फ्रॉम मुंबई टू पेशावर सो यू कैन अमेजन इन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स दे लेड द रेलवे लाइन एंड आफ्टर पार्टीशन इन पंजाब we have not laid railway line more than 20 20 25 kilometers that was the kind of level development which they did and this the kind of development which we are doing today we have seen the motorways being built the years past years past from 92 1992 i'm seeing this uh, nh1 from amritsar to delhi being constructed 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 and constructed sometimes fourth line sometimes sixth line lane and sometimes stoppage of work for years together and people are suffering heavily so so don't think they they were not development oriented and today we have much more responsibility we have less powers than them and uh, we uh, really we are working really more we are working in a democratic system we are working on the pressure sir has already said you it's part of our job but these ics officers they were also working under some kind of pressure at that time there were many independent states within india they the, these bureaucrats they were interacting with the these independent states their rulers their job was to tame them keep them in good humor and uh, on the other hand also control them so that uh, they behave okay and uh, during those days today we say that uh, dc rsdm ssps these are appointed on the recommendations of mlas this grievance is uh, now universal in whole country i tell you even during those times the big jimidas the big states the big people had a role in appointment of dcs and ssp without consulting them dcs and ssps were not sent in, in their areas and then dcs and ssp was supposed to go to them live with them with with their families and see what they are doing it was a kind of a, a, a mutual cooperation because the british were ruling through these jimidas they were getting the whole military support through them in the indian army british army at that time so these people were influencing the indian administrative system and precisely the ics in a very big way this i have learned from reading the all these old books so these kind of pressures these kind of challenges had been there in the past and these are here today we don't have to crave about that it is part of our job and we are recruited and trained to deal with these challenges and the latest is probably people have so many misgiving about the 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 service the in upsc whenever they will ask ki why do you want to join civil service sir i want to serve the country this is a very big lie most of the people do not come to serve this country they have their own agenda to enter into the civil service and they start implementing their agenda very soon when they come in the service unfortunate part but now the pressures of government the pressure of government the pressure of public pressure of big wigs politically heavy weights and the pressure of cbi and other agencies is very big on the civil service servants even today many many bureaucrats bureaucrats even police officer they are behind the bars all of them are not for the wrong reasons many of them have actually been framed who are not towing probably the line of the system so these this this is also again a very big challenge before you how you have to behave how you have to conduct how you have to uh, really work in a, such a transparent manner 
that no nobody can really hook you and how you have to manage with the kind of the system through which we are passing because now the uh, i really don't want to discuss many things over here but some hidden challenges are before you when you people are joining the server today i'm sure sure if you have cracked the preliminary examination of upsc which is such a difficult exam and you have been finally selected you will also meet with these challenges and you will really perform and i hope what we people could not do in our career for our people for our state for our country i hope you people will be able to do all that many many congratulations thank you so much and if you have any question in fact nobody learns from others we have nothing to really share or discuss the challenge before us what probably of different kind challenge before will you will be of different kind so still if you people have anything which we can really answer i would love to do that thank you so much thank you so much sir for enlightening all of us about the blacks the whites and the grays of the services i would now request mr olak to kindly enlighten the audience with his with his words of wisdom hello nice uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, a very hearty congratulations to all of you and uh, my colleagues before me have elaborated i think so all that you need to know about ias okay i am from the corporate and uh, having worked almost 33 years in the corporate our view point may be a little different now i come from the northeast though of course from the other side of the border we shifted here after partition and then we let on went away to the northeast now the challenges for the i for guys like you in the northeast is a little different we have been very closely associated with the civil servants who have been in our state i am from arunachal pradesh right over there you have a very big role to play compared to what the compared to the role that you play over here everybody out there looks to you for guidance looks to you for direction looks to you for almost everything here it is a little different okay so the cultural difference will always be there now you guys will be assigned to different states how you get across to those people is what will make you or break you like you saw that clearly mentioned your interpersonal relations your communication skills understanding the other the person across on the other side is very important is that feeling that you bring into your job sometimes you need to be harsh but you can't show it is something similar to us like in the corporate we may feel angry but we can't show it you being civil servants and you have taken it upon yourself to serve the general public in the best possible manner just like we in the corporates we think of it in a different way we are more profit centered and you are more service centered but our relationship will always be there we need you and similarly you need us right sometimes we feel a lot of we go through a lot of heartaches when we don't get things done we are very strict we are sticklers for time what i have seen in this many years except for a few people nobody values time you can see it everywhere how we start the day and how we end the day our sleepy classes friends they told me okay this is the time sir i said fine i was here 15 minutes before time right 
uh, waiting for my friend, then Philosoph came up, and then Sidusov came up, and then another friend of us, he came up. You see how we manage that time actually defines you. If you give some time to a person and you don't meet it, he goes back and tells the other person in the community. Here it may be a different, it may be a thing that you accept. But from the state I come from, it's 100% literacy. We don't accept it. The seven sisters, the states in the northeast, seven sisters, we don't accept this sort of behavior. They're all retreat. I'll tell you, I was talking to a friend of ours yesterday. I said all those seven states are very, very literate. Not only in terms of your books and other things, otherwise also. We're very disciplined. And we accept the same from the person across the table. I have seen my people are from the army, and we've seen all this thing happening. Discipline comes first. You don't waste your time. You treat the other person in a very humane manner. You respect his feelings. But then, decisions need to be taken too. And, they need, and tough decisions call for tough actions. And that I'm sure you know very well. You'll be, of course, acquainted with those things as you go on this journey for the next two years. Many people across board will be addressing you, sharing their experiences, and so on and so forth. And then you come out as very tough and disciplined people. And I hope you do keep up that, imbibe the best qualities that people can give you. Don't let it go, don't slacken up on that. Okay. And of course, create a name for yourself in a good way. Bless you all and all the, and take care of yourselves. And do your best. Good luck. Thank you so much, sir, for those wise words on the synthesis of the private and public sector. Yeah. I would now invite uh, Mr. So I'll take your leave. Take care. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time to be with us. We we'll meet again. I would now request Dillon sir to please share his journey and experience as an administrator with all our students as well as officers. I start at 12.40 and I intend finishing at 12.45, five minutes. Uh, you already had a very long uh, uh, input regarding the civil services from our colleague, Mr. Sarangal. And uh, I'm also thankful, by the way, to Sleepy Classes for giving me the opportunity to be here to meet a gentleman by the name Mr. Vinod Zucchi, who has forgotten me as I was his batchmate in 1982, and we attended the foundation <laughs> course together. <laughs> I, 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 I shared uh, my story of uh, entering into the civil service with Mr. Pulkit yesterday. And uh, I hope uh, uh, they have the online platform and they will share uh, uh, that my story of uh, joining the civil services with you at some point of time. I will not uh, delve into that. Uh, I have uh, 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 two or three points to make uh, uh, about the about the people who have been, uh, about the candidates who have been selected for the civil services, uh, both for the IS and the other civil services. And uh, also I see some of the aspirants over here and uh, they may, may, may also be thinking that something should be said about them. Uh, so first I start with those uh, who have uh, uh, qualified for the civil services and uh, especially for the IS. Uh, 
<clears throat> because they will be uh, in times to come handling very important jobs, at least in the initial careers with the great interaction with the, uh, uh, with the public and with the political uh, executive. Uh, I'll start uh, with a couplet from uh, uh, Dr. Alama Iqbal. Uh, you have heard the name of Alama Iqbal. I believe uh, everyone knows him. <clears throat> he was a very learned person and probably uh, I can't find any person uh, who has been awarded uh, uh, five different, uh, awarded DLITs from five different universities. Very learned person. So what he said, he said, Sitaron ke aage jahan aur bhi hain. Sitaron ke aage jahan aur bhi hain. Abhi ishq ke imtihan aur bhi hain. You have become stars. Sitar, sitaron ke aage jahan aur bhi hain. Your journey has started after becoming a star. The moment you join the, your first posting after training, you will find that uh, there are a lot of challenges before you. And uh, those are your ishke imtihan. You have to uh, get through those imtihan one by one. And <clears throat> those, once you are grounded uh, after having training from the uh, academy or from the respective academy of different services, you will be sufficiently equipped to meet those challenges. But uh, you have to keep uh, certain uh, things in mind in the present change environment. And what are those environments? Uh, one, one is the uh, interaction with the political executive, especially for the IAS officers. Uh, initially, as uh, Mr. Sarangal said, during colonial times, it was different. I don't agree with him when he says that the system of administration remains the same as it was uh, even after independence. The first uh, 40 years of, uh, after independence, the system of administration was quite akin to the colonial system. Very few uh, changed their mindset. And because most of the people, they came from very, very elite families. Now the uh, colors have changed and uh, we have uh, people from different backgrounds, from diverse backgrounds, and uh, they have uh, uh, they come from different uh, social backgrounds and that's how the, uh, the nature of the service has also changed. The delivery of the services have also changed. Now coming to the point of interaction with the political executive. The political executive, uh, they are very keen to uh, uh, get certain things implemented in a very short time. You are aware that they are elected only for a period of five years. And for them, this period of five years is very short and they want to get re-elected again. But you as civil servants uh, of any, uh, any, any service, you are only answerable to the constitution of India. You are only governed by the rule of law. You must adhere to the rule book very, very conscientiously, whatsoever may be the pressure. At the most, I can tell you, you can be transferred out. You can be transferred to inconvenient place. States are not big enough that you will be put to such a great inconvenience. Moving from one district to another, it's not a very big uh, price to pay for the values that you want to uphold. Many of you, I am sure, uh, they will do that. But some of us, they do compromise also. And that compromises the system. That's bad, not only for us, but for our generations, further generations. So you must uh, adhere to the rule book. That is point number one. We must uh, uh, have this principle in mind that all human beings are equal. Present environment in the country is, uh, it puts the uh, different people in different shades. We must be aware of that. We must be bear in mind all human beings are equal. Constitution gives equal right to everyone. So you must uh, again remember uh, uh, Mirza Ghalib, you must have heard. Mirza Ghalib, what he said? Bas ke dushwar hai har kaam ka asa hona. Bas ke dushwar hai har kaam ka asa hona. Aadmi ko bhi mayasar nahi insa hona. It's not an easy feat for a man to be a human being. So you have to bear in mind that every human being is equal 
and you have to be human being first rather than being put in one shared or the other later that you must bear in mind that's the second point the third point is that uh, we are now living in an era of uh, rti the right to information act earlier it was not there prior to 2005 it was not there we have some i think uh, journalist friends over here i have nothing against them <coughs> uh, but uh, you must be very very careful while interacting we know of the recent incident of a haryana cadre officer landed in trouble because of certain words he used in front of the press and he faced the music so at the time of interaction with the public you must be very very careful while interacting because all your actions are going to be captured by in this electronic media world uh, you will be seen very very closely and your actions will be very closely monitored you should be very very measured in your response whenever you interact with the a journalist especially <coughs> about that also again i will quote alama iqbal and you must remember him gaye din ke tanha the gaye din ke tanha tha gaye din ke tanha tha main anjuman mein when you were preparing for your exam sorry i am over shot uh, when you were preparing for the exam you were alone confined to your co walls confined to your institute confined to the sleepy classes but now <coughs> you are not alone you are now you will be now more visible to the public once you occupy the public office gaye din ke tanha tha main anjuman mein uh i am forgetting the second mesra where, where it means that uh, you will be under the gaze of the public now now you are no more confined to that uh, uh, your four walls that cozy environment you are out of that you are now uh, <coughs> out in the public so you must be very very careful for the uh, i'm sorry again the last point which i would like to make is about the lure for money uh people now somehow when they see the flashy lives of the corporate people or the others whom they interact uh, they fall into this trap and uh, make sure that you don't make uh, keep uh, as mr zuchi said uh, integrity should always be in your mind the probity in public service that's very important and that should uh, remain in your mind and uh, Uh, for those who are preparing i must say uh, again is a simple thing for them don't uh, lose heart keep preparing you will be successful one day and i will quote uh, majru sultan puri for that dekh zinda se pare dekh zinda se pare range chaman joshe bahar dekh zinda se pare range chaman joshe bahar raks karna hai to paon ki zanjeer na dekh so whatever are hurdles in your uh, you find that you have not been able to make it ignore those raks karna hai to paon ki zanjeer na dekh overcome your hurdles by your hard work <clears throat> and you will be seeing range chaman joshe bahar thank you very much thank you so much sir for those very very motivating words i would now request mr, mr. sidhu to please share his experiences with our audience friends good morning to all of you i have not much to say all as my senior please has spoken to you with hard work and good luck you are in the premier services now it is for you to maintain the standards lot of changes have changed we have but when we started the service that was the god golden period is because because of communication because of social media because of those many agency because of those many commission they were not there this uh, service was very simple they have not can they simplified the service rather they have complicated the service although, although i was also member of one of the commission in punjab my only advice to you is while well dealing with the king of my experience i can say when you are dealing with the politician you must have the courage and conviction to say no to no and while dealing with the public you must be polite must be responsible must we act up these are the only two formulas for you wish you all the best and good luck have a nice and bright future thank you very much
We're extremely grateful to our panel of chief guests for those words of wisdom, knowledge, as well as caution as well to help you guide through your career. We would now call upon the stage uh, Adi and Shivam for a very small cultural performance for all of you. Talwaron pe sarwar diye Angaron me jism jalaya hai Ab ja ke kahi humne sar pe Ye kesari rang sajaya hai नहीं जो तेरे लिए सो तेरे जैसे मैं खुश रहे तुरिया में सजा चाहे जानू kind of conversation between a couple ye punjabi folk song hai tappe kehte hain punjabi tappe kothe te aama ya kothe te aama ya milna te mila ke nit khasma nu khama ya जवाब देता
from Euphoria Club of UIET Punjab University who are here to perform for all of you. Uh, we will now be heading to the main ceremony which is to felicitate all the toppers present with us. We will be calling them upon the stage to be fel uh, felicitated by our chief guests present. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, to begin the felicitation ceremony, may I humbly invite Sri Vinod Joshi ji, sir, to please come forward and start the felicitation ceremony. I would also request Marmeet Ma'am to please escort our guest. The first in order is Miss Gamini Singla, All India Rank 3. Can we have a huge round of applause? <laughs> Gamini is from Punjab, an alumnus of Punjab Engineering College, Pride of Punjab. Please put your hands together once again. Talia Basti Rain. Next in order, we have Mr. Yaksh Chaudhary, All India Rank 6. 
Yaksh, please come on the stage. Thank you, Kamini. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Mr. Yasharth Shekhar, All India Rank 12. Thank you, Yaksh. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Jaspinder Singh from Punjab, alumnus of Punjab University, UILS. Thank you, Jaspinder. Next, we have Ms. Anjali Shrotia, All India Rank 44. Congratulations, Anjali. Next, we would have Shraddha Gome, All India Rank 60. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anjali. Next, we have Surbhi Singla, again from Punjab, All India, rank 75. A huge round of applause for Surbhi. Thank you, Shraddha. Next, we have Akshat Ayus, All India Rank 106. Congratulations, Akshat. Next, we have Mr. Abhinav, All India Rank 146. Please, a huge round of applause for Mr. Abhinav. Thank you so much, Abhinav. Now, thank you so much, Vinod, sir. You may please have the seat. Now, may I very humbly invite Sri Triyas T.R. Sarangi ji to please come forward and honor the guest. I would request Manmeet ma'am to please escort the guest. Thank you, Sri Sarangal, sir. May I invite Aditya Verma, All India Rank 200, to please come forward and collect the trophy. Many congratulations, Aditya. Next, we have Mr. Vikas Ruhela, an alumnus of UIAT Punjab University, All India Rank 221. Many congratulations, Vikas. Congratulations, Vikas. Next, we have Anoop Garg, All India Rank 269. Many, many congratulations.
Congratulations, Anoop. Next, we have Mr. Afnan Abdul Samed, All India Rank 274. Please, a huge round of applause. Congratulations, Afnan. Now may I have uh, Rachit Kumar Gupta, All India Rank 286. Thank you, Afnan. Congratulations, Rachit. Next, we have Rahul Anand, All India Rank 321. Next we have Kumar Saurabh, All India Rank 357. Thank you, Rahul, and congratulations, Saurabh. Next, we have Mr. Rahul Raya, All India Rank 359. A huge round of applause for Rahul. Next, we'll have Anurag Chopra, All India Rank 407. Thank you, Anurag. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sri Tilakraj Sarangalji. Next, we'll have uh, Sri Iqbal Singh Sidduji to please come forward and felicitate the students. Now, may I invite Rishabh Bhula, All India Rank 410 from Punjab again. Next, we have Solochna Meena, All India Rank 415. Congratulations, Solochna. Next, we have Keshav Gupta, All India Rank 439. Keshav is also an alumnus of Punjab University, a student of economics. Many congratulations, Keshav.
Next we have Mr. Nilesh Kumar Singh, All India Rank 442. Please come, many congratulations Nilesh. Next we have Mr. Rohit Singh, All India Rank 480. Next we have Mr. Ajay Kumar, All India Rank 509. Many congratulations Ajay, please come forward. Next we have Mr. Rajat Beaton. Rajat is from Punjab, he has secured All India Rank 539. Many congratulations Rajat. Next we have Ms. Rekha Meena, All India Rank 573. Many congratulations Rekha. Rekha, do we have Rekha? Okay, she's there. Next we have Ms. Manisha Tour, All India Rank 625. Many congratulations Manisha, please come. With this, we come to the closure of the felicitation ceremony. Thank you so much, uh, Sri Siddhu Ji. On behalf of entire Sleepy Classes, I once again congratulate uh, uh, a very bright future in, uh, for securing such a good rank in UPSC Civil Services. Now, may I very kindly invite Sri Sekhar sir to please come forward and say a few words to the students who are about to begin their journey and the students who are planning for civil services. Please. Okay. So, pehli thing to awaz, 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 awaz. So we have been teaching a camera for the last five years now. And we are seeing so many people in human form. So it's very different. So I have just been eating a little bit of food at night. It's a little late. So I wanted to write something. Then I just could not come up with anything. I thought that all of us have been able to write here. So what is this that I can share? So I have just had an experience जो मेरे पास है शेयर करने के लिए जो है बिहाइंड द बुक्स सिर्फ जो सिलेक्शन नहीं हुआ जैसे जब मैं भी खुद कभी एस्पिरेंट एंड एंड उसके बाद सिलेक्शन नहीं हुआ तो सिलेक्शन नहीं हुआ के बाद बुक्स ही बुक्स चल रही हैं पहले तो यूपीएससी की किताबें हुआ करती थी अभी नॉन यूपीएससी आर्बिट्ररी जो भी आ जाए हाथ में पढ़ लो तो उसी की बेसिस पे मतलब ऐसे आप कंपाइल्ड अ फ्यू पॉइंट्स ठीक है हर चीज़ ही नोट फॉर्मेट में बनती है क्योंकि यू पी एस वाला मोड अभी भी ऑन है कि हर चीज़ ही पॉइंट फॉर्मेट में है सात पॉइंट पाँच पॉइंट तीन पॉइंट्स ऐसे वही पॉइंट फॉर्मेट चल रहे हैं अभी भी तो इसीलिए कुछ कुछ चीज़ें मैंने कंपाइल की हैं तो आई आई जस्ट होप कि आप बहुत ज़्यादा बोर नहीं होंगे तो एंड जैसे एक मैं एक एब्स्ट्रैक्ट चीज़ पढ़ रहा था जैसे इट वाज अबाउट फिजिक्स उसमें वो एक गॉड इक्वेशन बनाना चाहते हैं कि जो सभी सुपर सिमेट्री बना देगी तो उसमें एक लाइन थी और मुझे लगा कि कितनी बढ़िया लाइन है सिविल सर्वेंट्स जो बनने वाले हैं सभी चाहे बन गए चाहे बन जाएंगे तो उसमें एक वो लाइन बोलते हैं कि कि जो बाउंड्री है हमें लगता है कि ना वी हैव रीच अ बाउंड्री बस इसके बियॉन्ड में नहीं कर सकता ये मेरा पीक है इसके ऊपर नहीं है तो वो बोलते हैं कि बाउंड्री इज जस्ट द स्टार्ट ऑफ इन्फिनिटी इन्फिनिटी शुरू होती है उसके आगे और तो इसीलिए अगर आपको लगता है कि रीच अ बाउंड्री आई जस्ट री इमेजिन इट हाउ वेयर यू इमेजिन योर सेल्फ टू बी तो बहुत कुछ पोटेंशियल होता है मुझे तो अपने देश में लगता है इतना सारा पोटेंशियल है फॉर सिविल सर्वेंट्स टू डू अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड जैसे कुछ हमारे दोस्त जो पहले बन गए अभी तो वी सी देम वर्किंग एंड जैसे कई बार ऐसे कंप्लेनिंग मोड में होते हैं कि इतना काम है इतना काम है बट मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर वेरी हैप्पी वेरी हैप्पी डूइंग वट एवर देर डूइंग तो इसीलिए मुझे लगता है कि एक बढ़िया चीज़ तो हो रही है ठीक है एक तो था बाउंड्री जस्ट अ स्टार्ट ऑफ इन्फिनिटी तो अगेन जब भी बाउंड्री सोचो तो ये चीज़ है और एक चीज़ मुझे बहुत अच्छी लगी कि जैसे अब मैं सोचो पढ़ाता हूँ तो वहाँ पर एक चीज़ हम बार बार एक शब्द पढ़ते रहते हैं एक वर्ड होता है इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइजेशन कि आप जैसे प्रधानमंत्री का ऑफिस है 
दैट इज इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज है ना कि जो भी आके बैठेंगे अपने हिसाब से कुछ कुछ काम कर सकते हैं पावर वगैरह है तो इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइजेशन और रिचुअलाइजेशन में फर्क हमेशा रखना ठीक है रिचुअलाइजेशन तो होता है कि बार 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 जैसे 26 जनवरी की परेड है दैट इज रिचुअलाइज मोरलेस ठीक है जैसे और कोई दिवाली का त्यौहार मना रहे हैं दैट इज रिचुअलाइज कि हम सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं कुछ है जो पास्ट इवेंट रिचुअलाइजेशन में वी फर्गेट वाई वी स्टार्ट मतलब मेरे मानने में एक शब्द में बोलूँ मैं तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि रस खत्म हो जाता है रिचुअलाइजेशन में इंस्टीट्यूशनाइजेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि बड़ा ऑफिस कैप्चर करोगे आप बड़ा ऑफिस को ऑक्यूपाई करके यू विल हैव टू गेट योर वर्क डन तो इंस्टीट्यूशनाइजेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट रिचुअलाइजेशन इज नॉट तो वो थोड़ा फर्क ग्रेजुअली एज यू कीप प्रोग्रेसिंग हम जैसे एक छोटा सा कोचिंग सेंटर चलाते हैं तो वहाँ पर ही वी विटनेस दैट रिचुअलाइज नहीं करने देते चीज़ों को वी वॉन्ट थिंग्स टू बी इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज कि प्रोसेस बना रहे अच्छे करंट अफेयर्स बनते रहे एंड सो ऑन सो फोर्थ तो इंस्टीट्यूशन से रिचुएशन में फर्क है तो ग्रेजुअली यू विल रियलाइज ओके तो फोन लॉक हो गया मेरा ओके okay, तो अब एक और चीज़ थी जो लिंकिन पार्क और चेस्टर बनिंगटन ही डाइड पीस तो लेकिन अब एक चीज़ है ही ही रोड समथिंग लाइक वेरी ब्यूटिफुल और कितनी सही चीज़ है ही राइट्स वन कैन सेव मिलियंस बट मिलियंस कैन नॉट सेव वन तो मुझे लगता है ये ब्यूरोक्रेट्स के लिए कहा गया कि आपके पास इतनी रिसोर्स पावर्स और सब चीज़ें रहती हैं यूजुअली वन कैन सेव मिलियंस आप फ्लड में आपदा प्रबंधन कितना कुछ करना है और स्कूल्स बनाने हैं पंचायती राज में काम करना है कितना कुछ करना है तो कोविड आ गया एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ही थी जो बाहर हमारे कुछ दोस्त हैं अभी जो जैसे एस था कोई डी था तो सभी सड़कों पर थे हम घर में बैठे थे पता नहीं था कि कोविड में क्या होगा किसको कोविड हो जाए एक्सेट्रा तो वो सड़कों पर थे एंड नो बडी हैड एनी आइडिया कि कि क्या होगा एंड लाइक शैलेश वॉज देयर खाना बांट रहे थे है ना तो ऐसी ऐसी चीज़ें जो पर्टिकुलरली इसीलिए मतलब तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि पर्टिकुलर एक चीज़ है वन कैन सेव मिलियंस लेकिन कई बार ऐसा होता है कि अगर बैड पॉलिसी बन जाए बैड पॉलिसी चलती रहे एंड आप क्रिटिकल भी नहीं हो आप क्रिटिकली उसको देख भी नहीं पा रहे तो मिलियंस कैन नॉट सेव वन लाखों अरबों रुपया लगा दोगे एक इंसान को फायदा नहीं होगा तो इसीलिए बी वेरी श्योर अबाउट दैट ठीक है तो आई डोंट नो मत आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू बी प्रीची है ना प्रैक्टिकल होना अलग चीज़ होती है यहाँ बैठ के भाषण करना तो बहुत ही अलग चीज़ है और प्लस दैट टू जब आपने कोई किताब में पढ़ाओ तो इसीलिए मैं ज़्यादा इसीलिए लास्ट में बस वैसे पॉइंट्स तो बहुत सारे हैं एग्जाम में काम आ सकते हैं तो और इसीलिए ह्यूमिलिटी बना के रखनी है हमेशा ही ह्यूमिलिटी बहुत ज़रूरी है सबसे बड़ा ही गहना है ये इससे ऊपर मुझे लगता है कि गहना है और एक जैसे मैं रिसेंटली एक सीरीज़ है उस पर चल रही है टेड लासो करके सीरीज़ है अगर आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ इफ़ यू वॉच इट तो उसमें बहुत ही बढ़िया एक देज अ प्लेयर जो बहुत ही फेमस हो जाता है तो उसको वो बोलते हैं कि ह्यूमिलिटी की डेफिनेशन उसको कोच बताते हैं तो मुझे लगता है वो बहुत ही ज़रूरी है वो बड़े बड़े शब्दों में लिखी होनी चाहिए ह्यूमिलिटी की डेफिनेशन तो ही राइट्स जिसमें एग्जैक्ट कोट करता हूँ कि कि उसका रस खत्म ना हो जाए तो वो बोलते हैं ह्यूमिलिटी इज़ नॉट थिंकिंग लेस ऑफ योर सेल्फ बट थिंकिंग योर सेल्फ लेस तो ये मुझे तो लगा कि ज़बरदस्त चीज़ है तो इसीलिए ह्यूमिलिटी बरकरार रहे और देश की सेवा चलती रहे मल्टीपल तरह से हो सकती है दे इज़ जस्ट नो वन वे ऑफ सर्विंग नेशन ठीक है तो इसीलिए आई जस्ट होप एंड प्रे कि आप देश की सेवा करोगे तो हम भी नागरिक हैं हमारा फ़ायदा भी होगा ठीक है ऑल राइट थैंक्स अ लॉट दोस्तों एंड थैंक्स अ लॉट सर आई होप यू ऑल हैव बीन एबल टू इन्जॉय एंड बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस इवेंट we would now like to call upon anjali shrote rank 44 who would like to share her experience and journey with all of you um good afternoon everybody uh first of all respected um uh, ice officer sir jushti sir uh, sarangi sir uh, siddhu sir uh it was amazing and great to hear all the experiences that you have shared with us uh in fact i wish to personally thank jushti sir he has uh, guided me back to back for my two interview sessions and the kind of interaction that i had with him was very enriching uh so a heartfelt thank you to sir thank you so much um and also a very heartfelt thank you to all the members of sleepy classes uh it was an amazing amazing uh, program that was organized by you guys uh, puneet pulkit sir uh shekhar sir bhumika ma'am uh lucky sir thank you thank you so much for giving us this opportunity i on the behalf of the entire 2021 selected students wish to thank you and also respected uh, uh senior batchmates shivani ma'am uh shalesh sir and rajat sir 
uh, it was also very nice interacting with you in person and uh, lastly to dear aspirants and students uh, who are aspiring for civil services um, it feels really really nice to be on the other side of the table and having also seen uh, that side and that phase when we were also in the same chairs as you are sitting today I think that uh, we all are very fortunate that we have this opportunity in our hands to prepare for this exam. I know so many other people who really wish to come and prepare, but due to some or the other obligations, financial, personal commitments, mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. able to do so. So if you have a chance to prepare and sit and write this exam, do it wholeheartedly and uh, give the best you can. Uh, there will be challenges, there will be hurdles, and uh, everybody will have a different journey, a different story. What will uh, set you apart from the rest of the other people will be your hard work and the self-belief uh, that you have in your own self. Uh, if I talk about my journey, it was a long one. I started in 2018 after my graduation and I took four attempts. And I uh, failed my preliminary examination twice. Uh, as Sarangi sir has mentioned that prelims examination has become very, very unpredictable and it is rightly so. Uh, but I always knew and uh, I remember when I could not clear my prelims twice, my father told me that, you know, uh, if you have decided to write the exam and to clear it, uh, take it on a mission mode, even if it takes you six attempts, uh, do not leave it. So uh, that was the kind of faith and the support system I had at my home and I'm sure we all have it. Uh, it's just that we need to, you know, be patient. Uh, there's so many things this exam teaches us and one of the most important things apart from hard work and perseverance is patience. We all today seek instant gratification and I think somewhere UPSC uh, teaches us this thing and this quality of patience. So I think uh, we all learn that and that is very, very important in life. Uh, I'll also like to narrate one incident when I was very close last year 2020 and I reached till my interview stage and I missed by uh, some six marks and that was totally heartbreaking because you know you come so close and uh, you have to start it from square one it's not like you have to give interview again the next year so uh, that was the moment my sister you know uh, pushed me and she sat with me and she studied so we studied together and uh, she made me believe that, you know, let's give it a try. And I think that uh, God has some plans for each of us. And if we just believe in ourselves and we keep trying, he'll definitely help us out. I got through uh, a very good institution by a UPSC marks uh, through that attempt of 2020 when I could not qualify. And it has also been a great and a learning experience for my own self. Uh, and finally, in 2021, I am uh, into my desired service. So uh, everything now, you know, seems to be so correct and so in place. Uh, but having said all of that, uh, there were times when, you know, I felt like giving up and I felt like, you know, uh, a fi kind of relative deprivation when I saw my friends abroad and, you know, getting, uh, I don't know what, six, seven digit lakh packages and everything. Uh, but I told myself that uh, since I have decided this for myself, I am going to try for it and I'm going to do it. Uh, so to all the aspirants who are going to start the journey or who are into their preparation, be honest to the preparation jo bhi aap kar rahe hai. Uh, dil se uh, it requires dedication, it requires perseverance. Uh, but at the same time, enjoy the preparation. Uh, the destination is beautiful, but the journey is equally, equally beautiful. The challenges you face, karenge, uh, that will actually make uh, your success more sweet. Uh, so uh, live this journey uh, wholeheartedly. And I think you have made a very wise and a very courageous decision to write civil services examination. Jitna ho sake, apne aspas ke logo se madat leni ki koshish kijiye. Uh, I took all the help that I could from uh, my fellow mates, my seniors, my juniors. There's something that we can learn from everybody. So I did that. And uh, just be happy and uh, try to uh, give your best. Apna optional selection bahut uh, wisely kijiega. Optional is a game changer. So do that very wisely. And have faith in yourself. You might not, uh, you know, get it immediately, but ultimately aapko mil jayega agar aap uh, mehnat karte hain and you don't leave it. I would not keep this very long. I will just like to end this with a uh, quote that my sister always used to, uh, you know, tell me when I was uh, 
a little scared and afraid that you know there are very good people and uh, there are already selected people writing the mains examination they're already into ips they're already into coveted services how am i going to you know compete with them uh, in 2020 when i was writing my first mains after interview uh, so she told me that um, the lines ke bina mehnat ke tak to taaj nahi milte dhoond lena andheron mein manzil apni kyunki jugnu roshni ke mohtaaj nahi hote so be your own light you don't need uh, others uh, you know you have to walk that road on your own others might be with you on that road but unless and until you walk it uh, you won't be able to make it so have that faith and all the best to all of you thank you thank you so much anjali for sharing your experience and how everyone needs to take the ups and the downs together and this journey doesn't have to be necessarily isolating but in fact a peer driven one wherein everyone can learn from each other and help one another succeed um i know we are running a little late but now that we've come and finished the event i am thankful to all the toppers who were able to make it here i am extremely grateful to our chief guests mr juchi mr sarangal and mr siddhu for taking out the time of being here of honoring all of us with your presence thank you again sirs it's been a wonderful experience and i'm sure all of us have a lot to learn from you uh lastly thank you for all the students uh for making it here the event comes to an end and at at the end we would just like to finish with a quote by sardar vallabhbhai patel who shared his words of wisdom with all the officers who were joining their uh, who were starting their journey of the civil services examination He said very wisely, take the path of dharma, the path of truth and justice. Remain united, march forward with all humility, but fully awake to the situation you face demanding your rights and firmness. We hope you proceed in this journey with all the firmness and the knowledge of assuring rights to one and all to the citizens of India. Thank you again for being a part of Sleepy Classes event. For all the students, uh if you would like to informally interact with the uh, toppers or with our esteemed panelists uh, please feel free to do so also we've organized a small high tea service outside so we'd be extremely grateful if you could also join in that thank you all and best of luck for your journeys ahead and the career ahead <laughs>